Okay. So the first part, illusionary effect. Do you want to start first or do you want me to start first? You go start first. Okay. So from my understanding of this, uh, it's like when so many people talk about a certain thing and say that it's true to the point where it becomes a fact. So for example, uh, let's say if I say that Smurfs are real, and then the, the next seven billion people say Smurfs are real, even though we have no proof of what of of whether it's real or not, it becomes a fact. Yeah, I I agree. It's like when you repeat something so often, even if it's not true, people believe it's true. Like one example uh, I read is, you know, break they say the saying breakfast is the most important meal of the day, right? Mm, yeah. Turns out it's actually propaganda by the Kellogg's company to sell more conflicts. So they they invented an entire marketing campaign and somehow managed to fool the whole world into believing that. It is a funny part. People still believe in it nowadays. I I I only stopped believing in it few seconds ago. <laughs> yeah, like the actually the most important is lunch because that's in the middle of the day. Exactly. Like most yeah. people don't even have dinner, which is right. pretty weird. It's like uh, it's like I think I told you just now, like. Even in, I don't know about other countries, but Malaysian primary school still teaches you like the food pyramid and like, it's wrong. It's been proven yeah. wrong for like years already and they still teach it like it's a fact. And then like in finals, we have to answer, oh, carb, carbs is down here and then fat is up here. This is a healthy lifestyle. This is how you yeah. don't become fat. <laughs> I mean, like, like you said, most of the things were actually invented by companies. It's yeah. basically all marketing campaigns. Okay, so like, okay, what is your stance on it and how, how would you go about it? I mean, personally, of course, I believe it's bad because but at the same time, I can't really blame people because when you're so conditioned to believe it and you don't know anything else, you just accept it as true because that's what people have been saying for years. True, true. But, but what I would encourage people to do is do your own research. Like yeah. always fact, fact check whatever you see or read online. Yeah. Try to try to find other sources to back it up. Yeah, we definitely need that, especially in our for our Malaysian aunties and uncles who believe everything that they get in WhatsApp. And they just yeah, they just send videos and messages. Yeah, th- there was like one time where I, like my uncle sent me a video and <laughs> this there's there's some it's like one month ago. He's, he sent a video and the caption below is Oh my god, I can't believe this is real. <laughs> It was a video of a volcano and then a shark was coming out of the volcano and then jumping in. And, then, and you could see it's like so like fake. But you know, because their generation is different, so they can't really see like the, the difference in pixels and they can't really see that it's being photoshopped and all that. Yeah. But like they still don't check it out. They see it's dope, they send everywhere. They don't like yeah. fact check themselves. But but yeah, that, that's the thing. You know what I hate? When they tell you to do your, your own research, like, like right. the burden should be on them because they are the ones sharing misinformation. And yet they tell you, I'm just sharing it. It's, it's up to you to find out whether it's true or not. And when you uh, find out and you show them, they don't listen. They, that's what I really hear. And they still refuse to believe it. And they say, I'm older. I know more than you. <laughs> <laughs> but it's nice that we both agree on this. Uh, what about the, uh, what's the second topic? What's the second topic? Uh, dystopian technology. Yeah, oh yeah. What, what, what is that really about actually? So like dystopian technology is basically, if you've ever read the novel 1984 by George Orwell, you would know what I'm talking about. It's basically where the government controls your every move. Uh, one example I would use is in China, where the government has CCTVs everywhere and they put propaganda. So like from the time you, you go to school, everything you know, they teach about the government is good. You never hear anything about the bad parts and the government can track you. And because it's for them, it's very enclosed. Everything online there is this is centralized by the government. They are on their, they have their own separate ecosystem. Yeah, they don't have like Google and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Dang. So like people there are just conditioned to follow and believe whatever their government does. That's because one, that's all that's all they know. That's actually one of the reasons why Trump wanted to ban TikTok, right? Because he was afraid China would get into their servers. Yeah. Oh wow. That means. Oh, no wonder why Leo stayed back in Milan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If he goes so, back, he cannot get blackboard. <laughs> yeah. So, so like so some people, they 
escapade by I, a lot of our Chinese classmates use that. They use virtual private networks, VPNs, because that's the only way they can access the outside world. But credit to them, since it gives them a new perspective, they are not just blindly believing whatever the government says. I mean, you can't really blame them. Their whole life they've been telling, been told that only use this, only that. So yeah. they're not curious at some point something's wrong. So good for them. Uh. But um, yeah, I notice you don't use social media a lot. What's up? Is, is that related yeah. to this topic? Yeah, definitely. Like, I mean, for me, pri- privacy is a big concern of mine. So uh, like for a few years ago, so I, in fact, you remember that was the leak uh, data hack of Facebook a couple yeah. of years ago. Yeah. Yeah. And Thousands and millions of people's data were just leaked online. Yeah. And ever since ever since I read that, I was like, you know what? Screw this. Like I, I got scared out of that. And I just decided, because to be honest, I don't really use social media much anyway. So I thought, screw it. Uh, why not I just take the next step, delete everything forever? Oh, so you had social media before this, but because I mean I, like yes. like years ago, but ever since I read that. Because I, I wasn't really active on social media, but after I read that, because I saw the data and it turns out Facebook was actually storing everyone's data in plain text, meaning it wasn't even encrypted. Like if you could get the text document, Ooh, you, you already know their, all the information, whatever they post. Okay. Like their login details and stuff. So, so there are people like you who, I know a lot of people who are like you, they, you don't have socials, right? But then in like this generation, a lot of people, for example, myself, we make money on social. I make money on YouTube, I make money on TikTok. Um, we can't really throw that away. So you got any advice for us on how we, have, we can strategi- strategically, oh my God, I hate that word, strategically yeah. go around that, you know, yeah, to protect so, ourselves even more. So for what I would say is, post only the things that are relevant to your content. Do okay. not share too much information and try to protect yourself online. Personally, for me, I have a number of privacy extensions to I use online like uh, uBlock Origin, that's an ad blocker. And then I use uh, this extension called Facebook Container too, where if you go to other websites, Facebook can track you there because you know, like sometimes you just open up other websites and then suddenly you get ads on Facebook for that. Wait, Facebook Even, can track you on another website? Yeah, of course. That, that's why, like, you notice when you go to other websites and you come to Facebook and they'll suddenly have ads same pertaining ads. Oh, to your search. Oh, shit. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we just learned about it in class a few weeks ago. Yeah, so even if you're not on Facebook, they still know what you're doing. That sucks. <laughs> okay, I need to install some extensions right now. Uh, okay. Okay, let's uh, move on. Okay, last one is social dilemma. So I think we both have like, I mean, we have a, we have we know the idea about it, but then we have different uh, ways of looking at we, it, right? Viewpoints. Okay, yeah. so I will explain mine first, and then you explain yours. All right, sure. Okay, so my point of view is more on like a normal everyday life kind of thing. So for example, if I decide to go out with you and the boys, and I say, okay, today uh, I just got in my my paycheck, right? I can pay for all of your meals today. Right, and then we go to this new restaurant, and then there's like a meal that I really like. I look at the menu, I'm like, oh, okay, I need to have, I need to have that that steak or something. And turns out it's like freaking, I don't know, hundred ringgit or something. And I really want that. And because I want that, I now realize I only have enough money to pay for maybe two out of five of you people. So stuff happens that creates a conflict between like my personal interest and the interest of our whole group. So that's what I understand about social dilemma from like an everyday life kind of thing. What about you? I mean, from what I understand, it's also basically similar. Like social dilemma is how, first, like how you said, companies also okay. they can't really control what people post online. You know. Yeah. Yeah, but from what I understand, it is there needs to be a balance. Like social dilemma is when how companies balance their need to make profit. Okay. And also to protect the privacy and data of their users and also to avoid misinformation because nowadays we all know there's a lot of fake news being said on social media. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So how do companies balance between those two? And personally for me, what I would say is there needs to be some sort of oversight. Like for me, I do not trust companies to regulate themselves. Uh, because they can't regulate. Like 
to monitor everyone's information because first of all i think it's quite impossible to do true, and true. yeah and second of all like first and foremost for companies they want profit so they'll always take the part that makes them the most money so what i believe is there needs to be some oversight about it like uh data protection if you would say like the government needs to regulate what information is posted can and cannot be posted on facebook but that like i said it's a delicate fine line there needs to be a balance between those two so it's like a censorship gatekeeping is that what you're going to say no i wouldn't exactly say gatekeeping but where, com- where companies introduce laws to uh, sorry governments introduce laws to keep companies in check ah okay that makes sense that makes yeah. sense yeah 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 for for me it's a bit a bit similar but it's more like a personal thing like the idea gave it is more about knowing your priorities i think like when we're young and naive i would probably have bought a stick but like the current me is like screw it i can have a stick another time to this for the boys you know what i'm saying stuff like that and also being like like realistic love you know like one day we're probably never going to see each other you're probably going to have kids i mean you won't have kids you don't want kids right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> but like you know one day we're never going to see each other so this is probably like, the last time one or two last time i'm going to treat my boys to like a meal so it's about knowing your priorities and being realistic lah at at the same time is is like is like the same thing like what you said um companies have a responsibility to treat their consumers right but at the end of the day you know they need to make money they need to pay their employees so they need to like balance it out the same way like we need to balance out our personal social dilemmas and not and all that kind of stuff so that's how i feel like it takes a lot of personal responsibility in my opinion so like uh based on what i mentioned one, one example i would use is in europe uh-huh. they have this law called the gdpr general data protection and regulation act oh well, you talked about it mean, you issues last right i think yeah i think yeah. so yeah so like where companies they are they i can just they can give you information whatever they have collected on you they have to be held responsible for that Damn, okay yeah. we, we need that in like a lot of countries especially our country yeah oh wow by the way missy you were right ruben was like telling about how like the leaks had like my sajatra info as well remember how you talked about us my sajatra I mean, you didn't really trust it and such you right hey hey right right my sajatra info yeah. was yeah right. yeah a lot man no? a like, lot like like what exactly did they leak? do you know the specifics yeah like um government we- websites like employees logins details all that that diva that, yeah dude it's a lot oh, oh. oh. yeah <laughs> okay okay so do you have any other thoughts on the three topics that we just discussed any other additional information you want to share i think i think we've basically covered everything but from from what i say like to be like i would say it starts with you you can't really trust the government yeah. or the companies because i honestly think they don't really give a shit about this either <laughs> <laughs> i i agree i agree i feel like like to conclude this whole thing right i think like the other day like we got to take our own initiative to like look out for our own selves because we can't trust yeah. those guys to do it mm-hmm. because if they wanted to they would have already done it first yeah, yeah. And, and and we need to always double check whatever yeah. we see or read online always double check that's yeah. the that's the main thing i would say yeah. proof check look out for yourself because nobody going to do mm-hmm. it for you and and what i would say is trust the experts right definitely doctors scientists don't just blindly trust whatever your relatives post yeah really. even if they say they are they did their research they can't really say that because to be honest they're not really qualified yeah. so who would you rather trust them or scientists who yeah. has done this for years but that's the problem a lot of people don't yeah we're at a point now right that where authority doesn't matter like a doctor who has done research for years his opinion doesn't matter but hey your uncle who just send you a whatsapp message he's a peer matter you know what i'm saying yeah. yeah so i think it's really important to take into account so yeah i, th- I think uh, we discussed everything right yeah we basically covered everything all right thanks for the chat bro yeah no problem and look at it it's 420 <laughs> hey, <I'm gonna> <laughs> yeah. all right let me just stop uh, recording